Hey guys, so you want to make a memorable and unique character, but you need help making a backstory. Well in this video we're going to go over the four key features that every character needs and give you two simple ways to make your own backstory. Coming up. Welcome to the Dungeon Coach. I'm the Dungeon Coach. I'm going to help you lower that DC in your game with character backstories. Backstories make the game easier and more enjoyable for you and your DM. It gives you motivation and perspective when playing your character, and it gives the DM something to tie you into his world. A backstory can be a daunting task, especially for new players, but what's the minimum that you need to have a fully functioning backstory? And once you have that, you can always embellish from there. And this is also a good time to talk to your DM, ask them about their campaign and their setting so you know what world you're about to build your character in. And stick around at the end of this video where I go over some common mistakes to avoid when making your backstory. There are four key features you need to have to have a fully functioning character. Class, race, background or backstory, and their personality. Picking your class and race are pretty straightforward options. And I have a video right here that helps new players pick their class. And these are two very important parts of your character, but your backstory is what really brings them to life. There can also be some confusion when talking about the words background and backstory. Let me clear this whole thing up. They're the same. Lots of people try to make this more complicated than it needs to be, and I just don't see any value in separating the two. D&D uses the term background in their book to refer to the mechanics of what your character can do. And in general, your backstory is where you came from, but I see these as one of the same. The fourth key feature is personality and how you roleplay your character, which is also very important, so I'm going to talk about that in its own video. This video focuses on backstory. So how does this whole process work? What comes first? But that's just it. One of the most unique things about this process is there's no set thing that has to come first. Many different things can spark the inspiration of your character. Which of those four elements that we just talked about stand out to you the most? Maybe there's a favorite character you have from a movie, a show, book, video game that inspires you. Whether it's the way they fight and what powers they had or what their actual backstory was, take pieces from that for inspiration. So let's get into it. The first method here is what I believe most players start with, especially new players, which is to pick your class and race first and start from there. This method focuses on the in-game mechanics as the driving force of your character, and you figure the backstory out from there. Some people already have the class they want to play and what they want to be proficient at and have a certain playstyle already in their heads. A nimble rogue proficient in stealth and acrobatics. A charming bard proficient in persuasion and deception. So flush out as much as you can on that character sheet and then start asking yourself why. Asking yourself this question, even about the simplest of things, can really help you find your character. My first character I ever made had to be a dragonborn. Rutgar Rage Scale. I've always been obsessed with dragons, so I had to start from there. So I pictured this huge hulking dragonborn with a big tail. What class was he? Barbarian. I also pictured him being very feral and wild, so I chose Path of the Totem Warrior for his subclass. We only started off from level one, but I wanted to have his class vision in mind from the beginning. Then I had to ask myself, where did he come from and what is his purpose? This is where your backstory comes in. Now regardless of which of the two methods you choose here, here's a huge coaching tip. Your backstory should explain the in-game numerical statistics of your character. You have a plus four to intelligence. Why? How'd you get so smart? You're proficient in athletics? Why? Have you always been naturally talented or do you have to train your butt off? This is what I did for my first character. I was a barbarian. Why? Was I a tribe of dragonborns that were all barbarians and that's just how we lived? Or was I oddly larger than everybody else and I had anger issues? I saw myself being more feral. Why? We were a wandering band of dragonborn nomads known across the land as the Warbringers, which is also why I was proficient at survival, nature, and intimidation. The last thing here I wanted to think about is how I'd play this whole dragonborn thing. So growing up around nothing but dragonborns, he was very untrusting about any other races. In fact, in his backstory, I put that his tribe was betrayed by a certain race. I didn't pick that race yet because I wanted to see what races all the other players were. So once I found out that Glenn was a half-elf bard, I found my target. I chose elves to be my hated race. A flaw of my character now is that I did not trust and I hated elves. Now time out. This is a huge tip here that I want every player to understand. You are playing this game with the other people at the table. So myself, as the player playing my character, loves Glenn. But my character hates Glenn's character. You have to be aware and in control of your flaws, especially if they affect other people at the table. So here's the coaching tip here. As I'm role-playing this dragonborn that hates elves, I am constantly looking for any ways to redeem this flaw and look for any nuggets I can to grow and change from. So at first he would sing and try to give me bardic inspiration. I would literally turn it down and say, No! Don't sing to me, elf boy! But over a few sessions of Glenn's character healing me, doing good in combat, and in the end, saving my life in a big battle, I forged a bond with him. 
which meant way more from all the struggle we went through, but me as the player always wanted for my character to be friends with Glenn's character. So whatever your flaw is, look for those moments of growth in your character and establish strong bonds with the rest of your party. So getting back to the backstories, all of that came from asking why about what it meant to me to be a dragonborn. So basically look at that character sheet that you're excited to play and come up with why your character is able to do all these cool things. Option number two. This is the method that I use now, and I would challenge anyone else to try this out as well. Don't come to the table with a class and race combo locked in your mind already that's gonna do a ton of damage and perform highly in combat. Instead, start with your story. Who are they? Where'd they come from? What goals are they trying to accomplish? All of these things are completely separate from class and race, and as you flush out your backstory, you can start to see their class or race come to light. So I've compiled a list of questions to help spark those creative thoughts and help you discover your character. Each of these questions could be huge to your character or not, and don't feel like you have to answer them in order or even at all. A lot of my players will just answer a few of the questions that stand out to them the most, and we talk about whatever gaps there are after. None of the things on this list has to be extremely flushed out or exact. It's just getting your brain going. Number one, where were you born? Maybe throw out some things about the town and the land around it. Number two, who are your parents and what do they do? Now we'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but a thing that players do a lot here is just kill off their parents and say they're an orphan. I would challenge you to come up with something else because you want people in this world that you know. Which brings me to number three, who do you know? Friends, family, rivals, acquaintances, anybody. Give your DM some ammo in this world, a rival to throw in your way, or some friends for them to kill. Number four is what did you do before you left to be an adventurer? Or have you even left yet? And number five, if you did leave, what did you leave behind? Number six is how did you become this class you are? You have all these abilities you can use. How did you get them? Number seven, and I think this one's mandatory and it's the most important one, what is your character's goals? Immediate goals, long-term goals, what does your character want to do in this world? Work with your DM to find out something whether it ties to the storyline or not, but you need to have some sort of driving force. Number eight is what do you love, hate, or fear? This is where my Dragonborn's hatred for elves comes in, and these three things can really help you find what makes your character tick. Number nine is what do you respect or value in others? This can help you forge bonds with the other party members or NPCs you meet along the way. Number 10 is one of my favorites, but what flaws do you have? These can be physical, mental, or social, but these can be really cool. And as a DM, I try and give out some sort of bonus for characters that pick big or unique flaws. Number 11 is, are you heroic? If something dangerous is happening, would you run to it? I'd also challenge you to make a character that's bold and wants to interact with the world. It's a lot more fun for the DM and your party to play with a character that's more engaging and not so hesitant and standoffish. Number 12 is, are you merciful? If you had the opportunity to spare somebody that just wronged you, would you do it or would you make them pay? A lot of the things on this list have to do with your character's personality, and I'm going to be doing an entire video over that, but personality and backstory really do overlap with each other. The last one here is a fun one. Number 13 is how do your powers work? What cool or unique ways do you trigger your powers to work, or how do they look when you do it? If you're a barbarian and you enter a rage, do your eyes glow, do you scream, or do the scales on your back stand up? If you're a warlock and you cast spells, do you have green flames, purple energy flow, or pure darkness? And number 14 isn't as much a question as it is a bunch of backstory nuggets that you can really think about. And that's it. These are just two methods to help you find your own way to make your character. Combine both of these methods together. Whatever comes to you first, just go with it. Ask yourself those questions and ask yourself why. And again, talk with your DM about this whole thing or even the other players at your table. This can be a really collaborative process. You can have a simple bullet point list of key things about your character or fill out that backstory sheet. And now for some bonus tips on some things to avoid when making your character's backstory. The first one here I mentioned earlier, and it's to try to avoid having a tragic backstory be your first go-to every time you write one. Not everything about your character has to be gloom and doom and loss. This is mainly a problem because it's so overused, and it's very easy to say, everyone I know in this world is dead. So change it up. And trust me, as a DM, that can be difficult to work with. It's okay to have some sadness in your backstory, but just try not to be too one-dimensional. Like those questions said, who do you know in this world? Another thing to avoid is to put too much power into your backstory. Your backstory should make sense for a level one character, if that's where you're starting from. Keep this in mind when you think about what your character has accomplished to this point. And if your backstory is that you're an old war veteran soldier, why are you only level one? Did you get an injury of some kind? Are you extremely rusty? Your backstory should explain the power level of your character. Last thing here is optional and simple. Leave some gaps in your backstory for your DM to fill in. 
Keep in mind that your backstory is from your character's perspective, and there could be some things in the world that you're in the dark about. Someone or something went missing, you found an item that you don't know what it does, something strange happened and you never could make sense of it, leave some mystery in your backstory. So there you go. I hope this video got your brain going and sent you down the path to find many characters of your own. The last of those four pillars is your character's personality. I really want to do a video on this and give you tips on making a unique character with flaws and quirks and give you tips on how to role play them. So I'm going to start something new here, guys. I want to know what you want to see. So each new video I post, I'll have a connected follow-up video on a similar or connected topic. And you guys can unlock that video if the main video gets a certain number of likes. So if this video gets 100 likes, I'll make a video on how to make an awesome personality for your character. And that video would also be a great resource for Dungeon Masters to help them create NPC personalities as well. Dungeon Crew, I got a big goal for this channel. I want to hit 1,000 subscribers. Now I know that's a lot, but I've been busting my butt to give you guys the best content I possibly can. So if you like what you see here, hit that like button, click that subscribe button, and comment down below, because my main goal is to help you guys. All those interactions help get my channel out there for other people to see. So I would really appreciate the help. So here's some videos on character creation, and here's some videos on how to be a dungeon master. I post new videos every Saturday at noon. And until then, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.